get some clean air into his radiator. Of course, when that moment comes, we'll see if that works, but that's the plan right now. I just want to be interested to see if this streak can break away from Dale Earnhardt because he's the guy that's leading that second group. If Earnhardt can get someone tucked up on the rear bumper, it's possible he could run this front three down. You'll have to see how it works out. I think that's going to be a tough chore there, Ben, for him to do because they are really working the draft in the ultimate way. Meanwhile, back here, Earnhardt, now he might have him a partner there with Alan Blake. They have broken away just a little bit from that pack back there, so uh, he might be able to do it. It's going to be a tough chore. Closes up right on the back bumper, Vernon. That's what people have to do is get nose to tail and run close to run these guys down. Well, congratulations to Michael Bow or Bowie, B-O-W-E, 38-year-old carpenter from Pewaukee, Wisconsin, who is today's winner in Gillette Halfway Challenge sweepstakes. He correctly identified Sterling Martin as the leader of the halfway lap, and he won a Chevrolet Luminous E34. Entries now being accepted for the next race. Call 1-900-436-7000. The call will cost you 95 cents, and you must be 18 years of age or older to enter. Or you can send your name and telephone number to the Gillette Halfway Challenge post office box 1868. South Hackensack, New Jersey, 07606. You ever been to Pewaukee, Benny? Uh, I don't know. Where is it? I think it's up by Milwaukee. I've been to Milwaukee. Yep. It's about 45 minutes away from Milwaukee, according to Mike Wells, our director, who grew up in Milwaukee. So you should know. Okay. Here's the scramble. Mark Martin leading um, the King and Buddy Baker and several others. Dave Bader. 16 car on the inside, Wally Dallenbach. I think Dick Fritton, the stupidest car on the outside there. Some great mass to go past the front. And all of those are, are in the lead lap, except for Harry Gant is not, of course. He is one lap down. We might make mention that both Harry Gant and Rick Mast have re-upped with their U.S. tobacco sponsorship until 1994. So you'll continue to see Mast and Gant running in their Skull cars. 1994. And Harry's going to be an old man by that time. <laughs> <laughs> Red Cross so <laughs> 132 laps completed. Out front is Allison, Rudd, and Marlin in the Winston 500. Welcome back to Talladega, Alabama, where ESPN is presenting live coverage of the Winston 500 from the Talladega Super Speedway. And performing super at this point is Davey Allison, along with Ricky Rudd and Sterling Marlin. Those three cars running by themselves in a lot of race track back to fourth place, Dale Earnhardt. John Kernan has a report on pit road. Well, Bob, you say that Davey is running super. Hey, it's got to be the shoe. Remember a couple weeks ago, North Wilson on a pit stop, Joey Knuckles, while running around from one side of the car to the other, lost a shoe. Well, Mike Kofer, the kicker for the San Francisco 49ers, who also happens to be a North Carolina State graduate and NASCAR fan, was watching. And a couple of days later, Joey got these shoes in the mail. You'll see they've got the regular laces there and also some Velcro snaps here. It says, guaranteed not to lose these shoes. Now let's go down pit road to Jerry Punch. We talked about drivers and teams trying to do some things to change their luck. Take a look at the Kodak team. You see the four car? That's Ernie Urban now. He's a little different. If he were to climb onto that car, you might not recognize him. He is minus the mustache. In fact, everyone in the crew here have shaved the beards, mustache, essentially all the facial hair off today as they are trying to change their luck. And, of course, one crew member back in Abington, Virginia, by the name of Mike Harris, who is a machinist, is breathing somewhat of a sigh of relief. He promised the rest of the crew that if they came down here and sat on the pole and won the race, he would shave every single bit of body hair he has, including hair, eyebrows, mustache, everything. So even though Ernie is still on the lead lap, Mike, back up in Abington, may be sighing a little bit in relief. I didn't even recognize Tony Glover. He's had that mustache for 15 years, and it's gone. I didn't recognize Larry McClure, the owner of the car. I tell you, these guys look so strange. They all had mustaches. And Ernie, I went to the driver's meeting this morning. There's Glover. <laughs> does he look different with that? Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Sticking that tongue up there, you can't feel that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question at this point is, are these three cars pulling away from fourth on back? Uh, the interval between... Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd, and Sterling Marlin, and this other group of cars. Now, we have uh, timed some laps here you, for you, and uh, going to 
to try to make that determination for you in a big A auto parts on track interval summary. We time lapse 128 through 132. Allison 49.4 to 49 and a half, very consistent. Earnhardt a little bit slower, and in fact, the interval uh, increased from 2.5 seconds to 3.5 seconds during those five laps. So they gained one second in five laps for Earnhardt. They're definitely pulling away. They're doing such a great job of drafting up there. They are changing positions. Although Earnhardt, that, that, he hasn't changed positions either, but he's just not leading that pack of cars back there as fast as Baby Allison is leading the country. Let me correct something, guys. The, the machinist who is standing by back in Abington, Virginia, the Kodak crew, that is Mike Hips, otherwise known as Hippie back there. He's a the guy sitting here watching the ESPN telecast right now with a safety razor and a can of shaving foam, hoping maybe his driver will win or maybe hoping he won't win. I'm not really sure, but anyway, he's watching us back there in Virginia. Bob? Glad to have him and all of the other ESPN Winston Cup uh, spectators, viewers watching our live coverage of this event today. Here's another auto light field summary for you. There you see the top three and then that other group of cars on back, including Earnhardt and Kowicki. And look at the scramble for position. Bill Elliott is trying his best. He's up on the high side, but here he sees that Jeff Ladine down on the inside. And they are really doing some scrambling around for position back there. Elliott feels that he has the fastest car of that group. If he could just get up there, and he has worked and worked and worked and is gradually moving up there, and he could pull down faster, I believe, if yeah. he could get up there. It'd probably help everybody if they just yeah. knew that they, he wanted to get up there and, and pull him around. But naturally, you're going to be hesitating to give up that position. I don't understand exactly what happened because Kowicki was right by an Earnhardt just a lap or so ago, and now all of a sudden Kowicki is back four or five cars. Rusty Wallace has moved up behind Dale Earnhardt. Well, he, uh, Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty went down to the inside, as Derek Cope has done now. Here's Jeff Bodine. They found the groove down on the inside that they can work pretty good. First passing we've seen that Reed is stuck down on the inside. Boy, that's a great shot, isn't it? Oof. Ooh, where's Kyle Petty out there? Surely he's not still on the outside. <laughs> well, he was. There wasn't much space between that car and the wall, but somehow Kyle was in there. Mark Martin has gotten back up to speed, fellas. Yep. He had dropped back, but now he's right back up there in the thick of that group. Yeah, he changed the battery and then dropped back again, but he's moving again. Mark Martin. Meanwhile, it is still the same. Very patient driving here on behalf of Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd, and Sterling Marlin as they're willing at this time to just grab each other and keep everybody behind them. We'll be back with more in a moment. Well, a major development while we were away, Ricky Rudd, first of all, lost second place, got out of the draft. Next thing, he was in the wall in turn number two, sliding down the banking. He has the car headed in the right direction again. Here's what happened. The car slowed. He was going slow, and all of a sudden, he just goes sideways. It's like he had a flat tire or something. He goes up, kisses the wall, comes back down. There was a big gap between he and the that other big group of cars. He was lucky that now those other cars are coming along and he comes down to the inside. Benny, I believe he did have a tire going down. That's what caused him to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah there it is. The right, right rear tire. Rear. Yeah. Anyway, what that did, of course, was uh, essentially eliminate rut from uh, contention, but it also brought out another caution, and that's going to close up the field. And it let him make that last pit stop. One more pit stop. They needed four fuel. Now they can make it. They don't have to worry about stopping anymore. Ma'am. Will they change tires or will they just gas and go? We'll wait and see. Some will do one, some will do the other. Pace car has the field in the third turn now. And they will be coming down for pit stops on lap number 144. And meanwhile, Ricky Rudd has stayed on the racetrack because he legally cannot pit. The pit road is still closed because the pace car hasn't been by to open it up. So He's got to ride around on a flat tire and probably shake the car all two pieces. Well, this was a break for Ernie Urban, who had the problem on the restart. He was running back there by himself, totally out of the draft, and he was about to go a lap down, and now he gets to catch up to the field. Yep, he was 23rd, the last car on the lead lap. Big break for Ernie. Here they come, guys, toward uh, pit road. John Kearney will go to you first. 